Dear students, today we will be discussing briefly about electrochemical energy storage and magnetic energy storage systems. So, electrochemical energy storage is based on the principle of storing energy in an electric charge through chemical reactions. So, if we have to tell about the process involved in electrochemical energy storage, firstly ionization will be done followed by transport of charge species and then recombining the charges. These are the things happens in a electrochemical energy storage system. So, this electrochemical energy storage system primarily classified into two groups battery energy storage system and flow battery energy storage system. Again battery storage system can be classified into five groups such as lead acid battery, nickel cadmium batteries, sodium sulfur batteries, lithium ion battery, then zinc carbon batteries. And under flow battery we will have two primary classifications redox flow batteries and hybrid flow batteries. We will discuss one by one for battery storage system. So, batteries are electrochemical devices that converts chemical energy into electrical energy. They are composed of a number of cells each of which has two electrodes an anode and a cathode and of course, we need electrolyte. And batteries primarily you can classify into two groups primary battery and secondary battery. Primary battery means we can use single time and cannot be recharged and secondary battery is designed to be recharged. So, if we have to say about its functional, so we will have two electrodes anode and cathode and we have electrolyte. Okay. So, when we have excess energy, then that energy has to be stored in a battery. So, the kind of discussions we will make this is in relation to the power plant where we can store huge amount of energy. So, during charging what happens and this in during discharging what happens that we will consider. So, during off peak period the energy will be utilized to charge the batteries and when there is a need then energy will be released and demand will be fulfilled. So, during the time of available energy then we will charge the battery which is composed of anode cathode and electrolyte right. And then when there is a demand then we can release the energy and provide it to the load to meet the demand. Two conductor electrodes and an electrolyte tied together in a seal container and linked to an external source or load and chemical reactions involves transfer of electrons between two electrodes which all electrons move via an electrical circuit which is external. The battery energy storage systems look something like this. So, there will be lot of batteries which will be connected in series and parallel based on the requirement. So, it looks something like this and then there will be power conditioning unit and this will control the amount of energy to be delivered to the grid and then this is provided to the grid when required. And when we have extra energy this battery will be charged. Okay. So, we can see here what happens while charging and what happens in discharging. 
So, to maintain steady power supply, the batteries are usually connected in series and in parallel. The battery energy storage systems are often made up of batteries control as well as power conditioning system, which is coupled with a plant that ensures safe operation of the entire system. Overall, here in this slide, it is shown that how batteries are connected and how and where the components are installed to provide the energy to the grid. So, there are terminologies we must know when we dilute battery energy storage system like CREP which tells about the measure of the rate at which battery is discharged relative to its maximum capacity, EREP which describes the discharge power, then energy density, power density, then efficiency, what is coulombic efficiency, what is battery efficiency and what is overall efficiency and what is cycle life. So, how many times we can use the same battery that means charging and discharging, then state of charge, the amount of charge which is available for discharge which is defined as state of charge, then depth of discharge. So, up to what extent we can extract the energy from the batteries. So, these are the parameters we must know when we are dilute battery energy storage system. The anode, cathode, electrolyte and ions used to determine the battery's capacity, voltage, energy density, power density and other battery parameters. So, these are very, very important when we are evaluating the performance of a battery storage system. In case of lead acid battery, when the battery is charged, the lead sulphate forms on the plates and sulfuric acid concentration in the electrolyte solution decreases. And during discharge, lead sulphate is converted back into lead and sulfuric acid resulting electrons to create a flow of electrical current. So, if we see it looks something like this. So, this is the one of the electrodes and other electrodes is PBO2 and this is like a spongy when lead is act as electrode and during discharging what happens and this during charging what happens which is shown in the figure. So, we must know the reactions involved in charging and discharging. So, this is like discharging and this is for charging. So, PbO2 converted to PbSO4 and H2O and then in the charging reverse will happen. What are the material used in this lead acid batteries? In positive electrode, normally lead peroxide or PbO2 use, and in negative electrode, spongy lead, which is Pb, is used, and as an electrolyte, diluted sulfuric acid is used. And what are the advantages of using this lead acid batteries? Because in most of the cases, lead acid batteries are used in renewable energy projects. It has low cost and good performance at low and high temperatures and low maintenance and high specific power, but it is bulky. So, we can have lithium ion batteries for storage. So, material used for positive electrode is lithium metal oxide and for negative electrode graphite carbon which is also known as graphitic carbon which is used and as an electrolyte lithium salt is used. So, configuration during charging and discharging what happens it is shown in the figure. So, first figure is for charging and second figure is for discharging. So, when we have extra energy we use it for charging and when we have demand then we release the energy for meeting the demand. So, during 
charging cycle this lithium cation migrates to the carbon anode via electrolyte and they combine with external electrons okay, and are deposited as lithium atoms between the carbon layers. And reverse things happens during the discharge cycle. So, it will be somewhat like this, it will move to other side. And reaction follows LiC6 plus COO2 and it will give C6 plus LiCO2. And the advantages of using this lithium ion battery is high specific power, longer life cycle, high energy density, light weight and high efficiency. Also there are reports of using sodium sulphur batteries in power plants. So, what are the materials used in sodium sulphur battery storage system? So, in positive electrode sodium is used which is shown here and for negative electrode sulphur is used. So, this is shown here is the sulphur and you can see the configuration this is a terminal and this is as a whole sodium sulphur cell and we can have molten sodium electrolyte here at the center and then we have solid electrolyte. So, here electrolyte is molten salt and this is solid and you can see this is the steel casing and at the end you will have this terminal which is shown here again. Okay. So, during discharge sodium ions flow from anode to the cathode where they react with sulphur to form sodium sulphide. And during charging the reverse reaction occurs with the sodium sulphide breaking down into sodium ions and sulphur and the electron flowing back to the anode. So, that is how it works and it has advantages like high power and energy density, then insensitivity to ambient conditions, then not containing any toxic or hazardous materials and their production process is relatively clean. And we can also discuss some of the aspects of flow batteries which is used for energy storage systems in power plants. This can be categorized into two groups redox flow batteries and hybrid flow batteries. A flow battery energy storage system is a type of rechargeable battery that stores energy in two chemical components dissolved in liquids, which are pumped from external tanks into the central cell where they react to generate electricity. So, it looks something like this, we will have negative electrode solution, this is the external tank here and this is positive electrolyte solution, this is the external tank and these are the pumps attached to that system. So, you can see the pumping is done here and then all the electrochemical reaction will take place here and then we will have control and power conditioning system and finally, we can have electricity to the grid during the peak hours. So, during the off peak hours we can store the energy and during the peak hours we can release the energy to meet the demand by using this flow battery energy storage system. Also there are reports of using magnetic energy storage systems in power plants. The concept is based on the principle that energy can be stored in the magnetic field associated with a coil made of a material in a superconducting state. Once the coil is charged the magnetic energy can be stored indefinitely by using this expression like E is equal to half of L i square where E is in joule and L is in 
conductance and its unit is Henry and I is in current and the stored energy can be released back to the network by discharging the coil. So, this concept is also applied in power plants. With this, we would like to show some of the battery energy systems which is already been installed in the power plants across the country. Some of the prominent installations are in USA, here its capacity is 400 megawatt or 1600 megawatt hour and one more unit which is in Florida. So, its capacity is 409 megawatt or 900 megawatt hour. So, here 132 energy storage containers spread across 40 acres parcel of land equivalent to the size of about 30 football fields are there and it is a big storage system. And in China, they have used redox flow batteries of capacity is about 200 megawatt. In Japan, they have used sodium sulfur batteries of capacity 50 megawatt. In UAE, they have installed about 108 megawatt capacity plant. In Australia, it is about 300 megawatt plant and in again in China, they have wind solar storage hybrid projects. They have used lithium ion batteries of capacity 320 megawatt power and it is paired with 1700 megawatt wind capacity and 300 megawatt solar capacity. So, these plants what we have discussed briefly about uh, the battery storage systems already in, in the practice. So, these technologies may be utilized in many of the power plants for storage of energy or specially in the renewable energy projects. We can now conclude what we have discussed today. We have discussed some of the concepts of energy storage in relation to the electrochemical energy storage and magnetic energy storage system. So, it is felt that there are ample opportunities and scopes of development of such kind of technologies as far as power plant energy storage is concerned. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you have received an idea on this topic. Thank you very much. Thank you.